Mawaz billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So today we are going to study about the Syria and Titus, which is a part of handwritten series of bacteriology. Let's start. So the important points regarding Syria and Titus are that it is a gram-negative diplococci having bean-shaped appearance. It is non-motile, non-spore-forming, and oxidase positive, and it is also encapsulated. Now coming towards the habitat of Neisseria meningitis. So humans are humans are the only natural host of Neisseria meningitis. In humans, they are found in the upper respiratory tract and colonize the nasopharynx from where it can enter the blood. It can be transmitted from one person to another person through airborne droplets. And five percent of the people become chronic carrier. It means that bacteria reside in them, but they never show the sign and symptom of diseases caused by the serum meningitis. Now coming towards the pathogenesis and viral inspector, they mainly cause diseases by producing endotoxin or different enzymes for to its polysaccharide capsule. So coming towards the viral inspector and the enzymes and toxin they produce, number one is the polysaccharide capsule, second one is the endotoxin, the third one is the IgA protease. And the fourth one is the factor H binding protein. So coming back toward the polysaccharide capsule, so it is antipagocytic and increases the virulence of Neisseria meningitis. It is antipagocytic in a sense that the negative charge of capsule repels the negative charge present in the cell membrane of bacteria and thus prevent adherence of the phagocytes to the bacteria and thus increase its virulence and causes infection. It also defines the serotypes. It also defines the serotypes on the basis of this capsule. In the serum meningitis has 13 serotypes. Among the 13, A, B, C, Y, and W135 are the most common. A serotype is the leading is the leading cause of epidemic meningitis, and the B serotype is the leading cause of meningitis in developed countries. And also, it has non-immunogenic polysaccharide capsule. It means that this, that the capsule of this bacteria does not produce antibodies against it. The third important point regarding the polysaccharide capsule is that it can be used as antigen in vaccine. Now coming towards the endotoxin, it causes severe shock and meningococcemia if it is injected in purified form. The important point regarding the endotoxin is that, that it is lipo oligosaccharide in comparison to the other gram negative bacteria which has lipopolysaccharide. Coming towards the third enzyme which are produced by C. meningitis, so it is IgA protease which causes adherence to the mucosa. The fourth one is the factor H binding protein which binds the factor H. It is bind to the factor H. Factor H binding protein binds to the factor H, which is an inhibitor of complement C3B factor. A C3B factor is involved in the opsonizing activity, so inhibiting it decreases opsonizing activity and thus resists phagocytosis. This factor H binding protein can be used as an agent in the vaccine against the group B meningococci, in which the capsule polysaccharide is non immunogenic, non antigenic. Now, coming towards the host depends. So complement activation is the main host defense against the Neisseria meningitis because patient having decreased complement factor especially from C6 to C9 which are also called late acting complement factor and those patients which are using complement inhibitor are at more risk for the infection than a normal person. Now coming towards the clinical finding so it causes meningococcemia and meningitis. Meningococcemia. What is meningococcemia? It is the entrance of bacteria to the blood and dissemination to the other organs. And its more severe form is Fredrickson syndrome, which is characterized by fever, shock, widespread purpura, dissimilar intravascular coagulation, thrombocytopenia, and adrenal insufficiency. It can result in sickening of organ, especially meninges causing meningitis. The second disease is meningitis, which is characterized by strep neck liver and headache etc. This is the picture of baby suffering from the serum meningitis. Now coming towards the laboratory diagnosis, so it can be diagnosed through microscopy, doing culture and biochemical test. In microscopy we can see them as gram negative, kidney shaped diplococci. In culture, in culture we use the chocolate figure. We can't use the blood figure 
because the trace metal and petty substances in the blood agar inhibit the growth of Neisseria meningitis. So we use chocolate agar in this Neisseria meningitis best grow on it. We incubate it at 37 degrees centigrade in 5% carbon dioxide. So they show convex elevated and smooth columns. You can pump the chocolate agar from blood agar by heating the blood agar at about 80 degrees centigrade. Now coming towards the biochemical test. So Neisseria meningitis is oxidase positive. It permits glucose, it also permits maltose. In contrast to gonorrhea, it cannot permit maltose. You can also do the CSF examination for meningitis, which shows turbid or cloudy appearance and naked eye examination. And microscopy of the CSF, we can see gram negative bean shaped diplococci. And in biochemically, the CSF, the protein content is increased while the sugar content is decreased in meningitis. You can also do serological test like latex agglutination test, immunofluorescence, and test for antibodies. Coming towards the treatment of disease caused by Neisseria meningitis, so it can be treated using penicillin and septriazone. And in among the Neisseria meningitis, sulfonamide resistance is common. Now you can prevent the disease caused by Neisseria meningitis by chemoprophylaxis and vaccination. Hemoprophylaxis by using repampin and uh, ciprofloxacin and vaccination we can do vaccination against the A, C, Y and W35 serotypes by using capsular polysaccharide as immunogen and they are conjugated vaccine. The vaccine against the B serotype contained factor H binding protein is immunogen.